Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome y'all out to the house of the Lord this morning. I'd like to say it is good to be here. And uh, if we've got any visitors, please just make, make yourself welcome. I know we've got several uh, that's been out sick and is able to be back with us this morning. It's good to have you back with us. And uh, i just thankful for being here this morning. I hope you've all had a wonderful week and uh, been looking forward to being here. I tell you, we uh, um, first time in a long time I've had to miss Wednesday for a work and uh, that was a little rough <laughs> i know a lot of people has to do a lot more than that but it just didn't didn't feel right but anyway when you're not able to to be in church you know you miss you miss it out and uh, but it is good to be here and uh, it's good to be able to come in together and worship one another this morning and uh, and uh, enjoy this time of year that we've got christmas time coming up and uh, celebrating the birth of our savior and, uh, you know, I am thankful for that this morning. But uh, this morning, uh, I'd just like to ask before we get started, does anyone have any special prayer requests? I've got several, Bobby. This lady that used to live down our home, we used to live. She really needs our prayers. Amen. Remember this, church. <clears throat> Mary Lee said, said several times before we got several that uh, they're at home that would love to be here and aren't able to be but just remember them any others this morning Church is a growing. <laughs> it is good. It is good. It is good. There you go. There you go. Amen. Any other prayer requests this morning? Yeah. Yes, this, this coming Friday. Yes. Uh, remember Miss uh, Margaret, um, that she's got her back surgery coming up this coming Friday. Uh, keep her in your prayers there. And uh, I want to thank the church for uh, praying for mom and daddy, both. Um, Mama's shot went very well. Uh, it wasn't near as what she thought it was going to be. Uh, I just I did say take a few weeks before it started really helping her. But uh, And uh, thank you for praying for daddy. He uh, He's doing really good. Um, he, uh, he still does have his pain, uh, you know, he has um, that he has every once in a while with it. Getting his strength back and uh, doing good, he's for me. Uh, let the church know thank you for praying for him and uh, mama she hosed him down this morning and got him a bath and everything but <laughs> but uh but he's he's doing good though uh the i know first couple of days home from having it he was a uh, he was a little loopy <laughs> but uh but i do thank y'all for praying for him and uh like i said again we uh and uh like i said again with the surgeries remember miss margaret there too uh, uh we've got a lot lot that's had procedures and uh I know someone has a new uh, some footwear this morning, and uh, <laughs> I know I, I hate that for. Just remember, uh, remember this, Lord, that uh, you know I know it's uh, aggravating to happen any time, but especially it's a time certain like a special times of the year or whatever. But uh, just remember Miss Courtney there. Um, I told her she's gonna have to stop kicking the tires on that Mustang. You know, <laughs> kick her back. <laughs> no. Uh, does anybody else got any other prior, special prior request this morning? Remember these, you know, it, 
That's something, especially when I'm younger. I know you heard heard about that, but nothing nearly is what you do around this day and time. People getting cancer uh, and having to fight that. Just uh, just remember that. And uh, also, uh, still remember Brother Jamie. Um, I know I got to see him several times throughout the weeks, and um, his knees and stuff have been bothering him. I think it's uh, the uh, steroids and stuff that he's taking. Uh, he's been really giving him a fit. But uh, just remember him. Keep him in your prayers. Um, he's still doing good, being able to get out and go. But uh, I know he. Uh, it's uh, it's not the Jamie before, you know, but uh, but that's uh, things we have to they have to deal with. But uh, remember them. And, uh, I got a special and also the Christmas yeah. Yes, uh, remember these and remember uh, remember the Christmas play coming up this coming Saturday. So uh, it'll be getting coming right around the corner here. Any others this morning? Amen. Remember Brother, this, church. I, I do want to mention to the church uh, <clears throat> some that the Lord has laid on our heart uh, that you may or may know, uh, not know about. Uh, I mentioned Wednesday night, uh, McKenna uh, had uh, come down with a virus there this past week, and also Miss Angie as well. And I don't know if Ryland has or not, but you uh, pray for that family that God would touch them. Also, Brother Darrell Combs. He's suffering with it, along with his mother, uh, but he is, uh, they're, they're all recovering and at home, and we praise the Lord for that. And uh, Miss Marie, I, I tried all week to call her. Has anybody heard from her? Miss Marie Spicer, uh, mm -hmm. I've tried to sell her home and, and can't get a call. So if somebody can help me out and make contact with her and check on her, I'd appreciate that very much. But do remember Courtney? And, uh, you know, she was uh, out there in the yard decorating for Christmas. and. Uh, Broke her foot, so you pray for her. And we was blessed. Can I go ahead and share what we done yesterday? I've been wanting to. And this, uh, this couple right over here, you don't know how many times I just about let that slip. Uh, we're just so excited uh, about uh, our new babies, and uh, we was blessed as a as a complete family uh, to go down uh, to uh, watch me grow. I believe is the name of the facility down there, and we was able to see. Uh, for the first time, a uh, little baby Walker, amen, uh, that, and saw him so active, and uh, and he was already amen, and I was so thankful. Uh, you just continue to pray for all of our mamas and for our families and pray for our church here. Looking forward to what God has in store for us. Get in there and get involved. we got a lot going on. Today's going to be a busy day. And you say, okay, preacher, sit down and listen. Uh, uh, I love you, appreciate your prayers, and good to be in the house of God this morning. Amen. Amen. Any others this morning? <clears throat> Just remember Keith's brother. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Remember Keith's brother there. <clears throat> brother, how's, how's your mom doing? She's doing a lot better. Um, she's uh, done some scans since last time we talked, and everything's looking Still, still remember uh, Brother Scotty's mom there, too. Yeah. Any others? All right. If not, maybe by uplifted hand. I know we uh, do have several. and uh, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Brother Gary, uh, if you wouldn't lead us in the work prayer this morning. Thank you, Brother Gary. <clears throat> this morning, uh, as far as way of announcements, uh, today we'll be having play practice uh, after church, and uh, also we'll uh, be uh, staying after church to decorate uh, the church too, so we'll just ask if anybody that could help out. Uh, there's a lot to uh, do on that. Uh, that'll make that a little quicker there, but uh, just to remember, be decorating the church at, uh, decorating the church after church. And uh, then uh, we'll be having our play practice there in after church also. And um, also it was mentioned, uh, let me get this right, play practice Monday? Yeah, Monday and Thursday. Monday and Thursday. At 7. At 7. Now for the last Tuesday, yeah. right? It's not been able to come to one. Please try to come yeah. so we'll have a good idea what we're doing there. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was going to do one 30 minutes for the play. But. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> So we've got uh, three opportunities there. I know uh, I know pretty much a lot of, a lot of the ones have been able to come out at least once, and uh, just 
encourage you to kiss still uh, try if you hadn't if you want to be in a play to please try to at least make one because um, we're uh, there's uh, really not I, mean, I know the little ones have got some uh, speaking parts there uh, but um, I know for the most part singing singing and things to kind of come out and just kind of get an idea of what we're going to be doing and uh, we'll uh, get this uh, sorted out there so uh, just remember uh, play practice today after church Monday and Thursday uh, <clears throat> and seven o'clock both times Monday and Thursday correct yeah all right all right, and also, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. If we, uh, okay, yeah. If anybody would like to go, uh, go, uh, brother Gary, I know he's gonna go want to go help uh, pick up the treat. Um, they're gonna try to go it. If not Monday, definitely Tuesday there, so we can have it to uh, get it together on Wednesday. Um, but if any of y'all like to go ride with them to go get this, um, uh, just please stay after church. Uh, just a minute with uh, get Brother Gary there, and one, and uh, we'll uh, get that, and uh, we're going to uh, try to go get that taken care of. It'll be a your little ride up to uh, the other side of West, other, uh, West Virginia. I hope you ain't going that far. Uh, <laughs> other side of Virginia there in Cana where we normally get our uh, treat bags and things. So uh, just ask you if you'd be interested in that, uh, just, uh, just to get there with after church. Um, also, uh, as is mentioned, you know, after church, also uh, this evening uh, we'll be having our service, our uh, first Sunday night uh, service here, and uh, we'll be having our deacons meeting at 5 o'clock. Our service will be at 6, and uh, we'll be having a business meeting immediately afterwards. So uh, we will be having a busy day today. So uh, just encourage you all to come out to that tonight. And uh, <clears throat> also coming up, our, don't forget our Wednesday night Bible study that we have each Wednesday night. And uh, uh, just encourage you to come out to that. And uh, as mentioned, as we normally do, too, after service that night, uh, we'll probably try to get together and put the treat bags together and uh, get those ready for Saturday. So... Uh, <clears throat> Also, December the 11th, uh, this coming Saturday, uh, will be our Christmas play. And again, it is going to be an outside play, and this will be at 7 p.m. And uh, we ask you that you bring, uh, bring a chair um, there, and uh, we're going to get as, who, who, we can, who can or whatever. We're going to try to get sitting right there uh, up close and personal to the, uh, to the play. And, uh, but then we're also going to try to uh, make it to where the ones that aren't able to really get out of their vehicles to be able to park and still be able to see it there. So uh, this is coming up at 7 o'clock, this coming Saturday. And uh, it says uh, also bring snacks there if we for after the play. Um, <clears throat> and uh, coming up December the 14th, we'll be having our Lady Circle meeting at 6.30. And uh, December the 18th will be our food pantry uh, coming up. So uh, let's not forget this. Um, and as far as way of announcements, I think that's all I have, regular announcements. Um, I guess at this time I'd like to ask, has anyone had a birthday this past week and like to be recognized? I was, I was wondering where he said, I was looking back there, I was pushing it. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Yeah, Miss Miley there, she's another one that's growing up, growing up too fast. We've got a lot of them that's growing up and a lot of little ones coming on, and uh, I tell you, it's truly a blessing. I know it was mentioned the other night at the play about her birthday, and boy, she about hit them doors wide open. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I was like, well, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, it is a happy birthday. Uh, has anyone had a wedding anniversary this past week and like to stand to be recognized? Oh, we got a couple of that. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> all right. Is there any other announcement I've left out? Anything at all? All right. All right. If, uh, if you will, at this time, let's all please stand and get a red back hymnal. And uh, we're going to... We're going to sing two Christmas songs, uh, so don't sit down after the first one unless you want to sing it sitting down. So let's all stand and get a book and turn to page 371. Page 371, and let's all stand.
say it again. Good morning to each and every one of you. I want to welcome you out to the house of God. I appreciate Brother Bobby always doing a wonderful job. And I want to welcome all those that may be joining us by the way of internet. We appreciate uh, you joining us and I wish you so much that you could be in the house of God with us. But we're so thankful to look across and see a full house. Uh, there are just a very few empty uh, benches there and we appreciate that. And again, there's, there's seating up here. And uh, uh, maybe all the birthday uh, kids maybe need, need to get up here, right? You're too old to be a kid, right? Amen. Uh, Courtney said, that embarrasses me too. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate the Lord allowing us to be here. And uh, so good to see your smiling faces. I invite you to turn with me and a copy of God's Word to Romans chapter number 6. Romans chapter number 6. And again, I want to say thank you. Uh, for being so faithful. And I look across the house of God and uh, see several that uh, had been sick and several uh, that's been away. And we appreciate the Lord bringing you back uh, here to, uh, with us. And we just invite you to worship with us. And uh, let's just surround ourselves uh, with the Word of God. I believe with all my heart the message that the Lord has given us today uh, can be a great help, a great help to each and every one of us if we will just listen and allow it to uh, permeate and penetrate our heart. Um, it's so important for us to realize uh, Romans 6 and verse number 23 pertains to each and every one of us. We're going to look at one verse, and we're going to talk about wages, and we're going to talk about gifts this morning, and the differences between those two. There's so much volume in this passage of Scripture, in this verse of Scripture in Romans Chapter number 6 and verse number 23. Um, again, I just want to say thank you for all those that uh, work and participate uh, in the things that goes on here in the house of God. And we could not do it without you. And uh, again, I'm just so excited about our new additions. I look back there and see Wade. And uh, we know Bryce, he's, he's growing up. And uh, we've got, to, you know, I got to look around. There's Jackson back there. And uh, we're so thankful for him. And uh, there's a little Emmy I see you sitting in Papa's lap. And, uh, but you know what? I see the tides turning to all the little boys. You notice that? We, we got a little boy, got Walker there on the way. And, and uh, we'll, we'll be tickled to death with either one. But you know what? Uh, little uh, Emmy and, and Lily back there is going to be in trouble in a few years, I believe. <laughs> Amen. There's going to be two daddies going to have their, uh, uh, their eyes peeled right there. Amen. But... We're so excited about God adding to our church and just brings joy to my heart. And I know God has blessed these homes. You pray for moms and dads. And I, but little Ada's not too old to be worried about either back there, brother. Amen. <laughs> I believe daddy's already prepared for that. Amen. But we're so thankful uh, for the Word of God. Uh, and the Word of God's where we find our help. We're talking about uh, in the Word of God, chapter number 6 of the book of Romans, uh, the Apostle Paul, under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, has pinned down these instructions, not only to the church of Rome, but the Word of God here in Romans chapter number 6 is speaking directly to the church of today. We need to remember that. This is not the church of yesterday also, but this is the church of today. It's speaking to each and every one of us, and we need to take heed of what God's Word says. And the Bible here is speaking of a time whenever we were slaves to sin. Uh, a time whenever we went about doing the works of darkness and went about doing the works of unrighteousness and we were a slave to our master which was sin and the flesh. And the Bible speaks of being delivered from that, that sin, being delivered from from being a slave. No longer are you a slave to sin, but you're a slave to righteousness. And the Bible speaks of that, you know, if you're continuing in sin, we have to stop and question ourselves, are we truly born again? The fruits of the Spirit and the works that we do should be the evidence of whether or not we're saved by the grace of God. Uh, that's why if, if we claim to be saved, and the Bible says we should not continue, uh, the Bible asked that question, should we continue in sin? And he said, God forbid. Absolutely not. We should not continue in sin if we're saved by the grace of God. So let me ask you a question this morning. 
Uh, has there ever been a time in your life and maybe that's where you're at now listen I want to be as gentle but I want to be as direct and straightforward as the word of God is this morning I'll not water it down because I want it to be clear to you I know that bad things happen to good people I know that I know that hard times even though you're trying your best to live for the Lord uh, hard times come trials come and tribulations come But I'm telling you, if day in and day out it seems like a struggle and it seems like a fight and all things are going bad and nothing going right, I believe it would be very smart for us to look at our life and ask us this question. And the title of the message is in a form of a question to us today. And that question is, are you earning a wage or enjoying a gift? Are you earning a wage or are you enjoying a gift? There's two key key words in the verse uh, that we're going to read here in a moment. And those two key words are wages and gift. Wages and gift. Let us read together uh, in in the Word of God, chapter 6 and verse number 23. The Bible says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It begs to be read again. Now listen close. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said this in Matthew chapter number 6 and verse number 24. No man can serve Two masters. You're either this morning a slave and a servant to sin, or you're a slave and a servant unto righteousness and the God above. Amen. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, uh, Lord, we need your help. And God, we need the direction of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I realize, God, nothing will be accomplished without Him. And God, I pray that He will have free course and leadership of the service, everything that is said and done. And Lord, I pray for a preparation of hearts. I pray for an attention, God, that only you can give. And Lord, that Satan would be bound outside the walls of the church, that they would, he would not distract anyone uh, from what you have preached here today. And I pray, Lord, for a touch. And Lord, keep us from self. And God, empty us out of all the flesh and fill us with the Holy Spirit. And as always, help us to decrease that Christ will increase. I pray for each and every one that will hear this message. May we be honest with ourselves and honest with you, for you already know all about us. God, do a work that only you can do. Reclaim that one that's out in sin. Lord, I pray conviction on the heart of the one that is lost. And I pray, pray, Lord, that you'd restore the joy of those that are saved but yet out in sin, that you 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 would wash them of their sin and restoring to them the joy of your salvation. For whatever you do, God, we'll promise you this. We'll bow our heads and lift our hands toward heaven and say that Jesus did it all. Without him, without him we can do nothing. And it's his name we do pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to look at those two words this morning for just a little while. And the first one we want to look at is a wage. If I was to ask you this morning, what is a wage? What would you say to me? What would be that definition? A wage is something that you earn or deserve. Listen close. A wage is something that you earn or deserve. And you earn it and deserve it by deliberate action and a deliberate conscious decision on your part. If you go to work, you make a decision to get up in the morning and go to work. You make a decision to perform your job through the eight, nine, ten hours, how long it is uh, that you're at the workplace. But one thing for certain is on a Friday evening or maybe twice a month or once a month, you're going to expect something. If you go to work and make that deliberate decision to perform a task, whatever that may be, for, for your employer, what are you going to expect? 
your wage. That's right. You're going to expect a check. If you did not get that, uh, there's not going to be many days until you're going to start questioning, where is my pay? I performed the work. I earned this money. It is mine, and I deserve that, and I expect to be paid. That is exactly what a wage is. And let us read it in context. Now watch this now. We're going to break this verse down. The Bible says, For the wages of what? Sin is death. What does that mean? The wages of sin is death. What is sin? Sin is deliberate action on our part to do something outside of the will and the commandments of God. Pay close attention. A wage is something that is earned and something that is deserved, but it's earned and deserved by a conscious decision and a deliberate action on our part. That's what sin is, brother. Sin occurs when we're tempted and drawn away of our own lust and enticed. In other words, whenever we give in to that temptation and make that conscious decision, listen close, you have never, you have never sinned in your life without you having a decision not to or to commit that sin. That, listen, if you do not have a decision in that, it's no longer sin. It's not a sin. A sin is whenever you have a conscious decision and you say, preacher, I sin each and every day. You know, statistically, every, every adult makes, they say, on the average, of 35,000 conscious decisions each and every day. You don't realize a lot of those because you're used to making those. Think about every decision. You've got a decision right now whether to continue to listen to the message or to, to shut me out. You've got a decision of, of whether or not to get up and walk out whenever the singing is done. You've got a decision whether to come to the altar. You've got a decision well, what to have for dinner. The life is full of decisions, but it's also full of, listen, that for every decision, there's always, always, always a consequence or rewards and sometimes a combination of both of those things in our decision. You say, preacher, it's not, it's not always cut and dry whenever we make those decisions. I'm fully aware of that. Listen, this will help you. Sometimes in life and sometimes with decisions that we have, a lot of times you may have three choices to make or three avenues you could go in that decision. And all three of them don't seem to be good. You ever had one of those? You had a hard decision to make and you really, I mean, it was before you and uh, you know you can't get a definitive answer on that. What will keep you from sin? What will keep you from sin is that you got the intent in your heart to do the will of God. You listen and make your decision Based on what? Listen, this will, this will tell you whether or not it's sin. Is this decision made in order to satisfy the flesh? Or is this decision made in best order to glorify and honor God and, and keep His commandments? That will, that will make those decisions for you if you'll narrow it down to those two. Why am I making the choice that I'm making? Am I making this choice because that's what I want to do? Or that's what everybody is telling me I need to do? Or is that I'm making this decision to do this because everybody else is already doing it? Or am I making this conscious, determined decision and I'm doing my best to, to make sure that I do it according to the will of God? And my heart's true desire is to honor God, to live for Him, and make this decision according to the will of God. Now the intent of the heart, the intent of making that decision will be a key factor in determining whether or not that choice is ending up a choice of sin or a choice that's going to be pleasing unto God. But notice that for a fact that every decision that we make in our life has consequences and rewards and sometimes a combination of both. 
and that we make up to 35,000 each and every day in our life. And all of them has a consequence or reward. The Bible says right here, for the wages of what? Sin. We understand what a wage is and we understand what a sin is. And a sin is anything, anything that goes against the commandments of God that is pleasing unto the flesh and not pleasing unto God. That's pretty straightforward. God's given us His Word, and the Bible says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see if they're of God. Hey, listen, He never called you to make a quick and a rash and a, uh, and a harsh decision. He wants you to pray about those things. And you know what? Sometimes you just have to stop right there where you're at and say, Lord, help me that i got to make this decision. i got to make it quick. And you know what? That shows the true intent of your heart and what decision to make. But notice as we complete this thought, for the wages of sin is what? Somebody help me. Death. For the wages of sin is death. Whenever we sin, we earn death. Whenever we consciously make a decision to sin, we're planting seeds that brings forth death. We see it throughout the Word of God. We find it in the first parents in Genesis, the early part of Genesis. When God had commanded them, uh, they can freely eat of all the trees of the garden, but there's one tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You're not going to eat that, but the, first, the day that you eat that, up, you shall surely die. You remember that? The old devil come in, he tried to, he did deceive them. He twisted the word of God, and he said, lest you die. You're not going to surely die. So what did he do? All he had to do was plant a little seed of doubt. But don't, listen, never mistake. Adam and Eve both had a conscious and deliberate decision whether or not to obey God or to listen to what the devil was telling them and try something that was appealing to their eyes, knowing all along, fully conscious, that they were disobeying God. But yet they really didn't understand the amount of death that would follow or the consequences, which is so oftentimes our case, amen? Whenever we're in the middle of making those decisions and we choose sin time and time again, Satan will never tell you or show you the darkness that lies ahead because of the decisions of that sin. But we understand it did not take but one chapter, one chapter, are over uh, from God uh, telling them the consequences of their actions. We find uh, that Cain and Abel was born and Cain and Abel uh, rose up. They grew up. Uh, but what happened uh, there in chapter number four? Uh, we find that Cain rose up against uh, his brother Abel and slew him because of jealousy and because of sin. Uh, do you know what that is? Uh, uh, that is a direct consequence uh, and a wage that is earned because Adam and Eve disobeyed God and sin entered in the family. Amen. Sin. The wages of sin is death. We look through the Word of God. We find other instances over there in 2 Samuel. I believe it is chapter number 12. Do you remember the sin of David? as he was up there and saw Bathsheba and he took her and laid with her. He committed murder uh, with your right, sent him up there in the front lines, made sure he was killed, thought he had it all covered up. Uh, but there was a prophet by the man of, uh, name of Nathan uh, that come and told him a story about a man that come and took a little ewe lamb uh, and killed it and dressed it. Uh, uh, David said, uh, you tell me who that is, uh, he'll pay uh, uh, the ultimate price. Uh, uh, Nathan put his finger in his face uh, and said, thou art the man. Uh, and Nathan goes on to tell, uh, uh, because you repented, uh, uh, you'll not die but because uh, you brought great occasion uh, to, upon uh, the name of the Lord uh, to be criticized, uh, to be ridiculed, uh, that the baby shall surely die. Mm, getting real now, isn't it? The wages of sin is death. The ugliest part I can think of about sin, brother, Sin does not only affect the one that commits that sin. Notice that Cain and Abel 
It was brought up like now Cain had to make that decision. But I believe this was the fruits of Adam and Eve allowing sin to be brought into the human race. And we're awful critical over Adam and Eve and saying it was their fault. But I believe with all my heart if it was you and I in that situation, we would have sinned against God a lot, a lot sooner than they did. Amen? We're not righteous. Amen? We'll fall short, the Bible says. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Preacher, why is this message so important? Because I want to tell you, we've got a a lot of people that's living in a cold and a dark and a defeated life and a defeated state. They feel like, listen close to what I'm saying. I'm trying to help you. God's burdened my heart with this message because I want you to live in life. I want you to live in light. I want you to live in joy and I want you to live in happiness. It's not fit for a child of God to live back in darkness and sin. He's saved you and brought you out of that and put your feet on a solid rock. He wants you to live life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Oh my goodness, but we're a lot of times we're satisfied, we're content and just surviving. There's a lot of people today, it seems like every decision you make, it ends up a big mess. There ain't nothing going right. There's nothing nothing, uh, that is positive in your life. We have to stop and wonder, are we earning a wage? Or are we enjoying a gift? I say if everything's going bad, you're not enjoying the gift that God's give you. I say if we're if everything's going bad, we can't have joy in the midst of the storm. I'm not saying it's always going to go good. But Brother Corey, in the the middle of the hard times, if your heart's right with God and you're trying to do it right, God's going to speak to you. He's going to give you peace and He's going to walk with you. If you feel all alone and feel like God's left you, God's not left you one bit, amen. Somewhere along the way because of sin, we have left God, walked away from Him, and we're out of fellowship. The wages, the earned wages of sin is death. The Bible goes on to say there was two uh, two, uh, cities uh, named Sodom and Gomorrah there in the book of Genesis. Do you remember it? Because of their grievous, grievous sin. God pronounced judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah. It was just not the sin of homosexuality, but that was a perverse sin during that time. But he was all different kinds of sin. But the Bible says, Lot and his wife was led out of that city. And even whenever his wife looked back, she was turned to a pillar of salt. Two cities... Because of sin was destroyed. But I want to tell you, the death, the worst death, that's physical death. But the wages of sin is death. It speaks of a deeper, more intense, a more permanent death that you and I, before we were saved by the grace of God, we were a living dead person. On the inside, we were dead in our sins and trespasses. Do you know what the ultimate death is? Is being totally separated from God. The wages of sin is death. The earned wages of you deciding to sin causes you to be separated from God. Listen close. I'm not telling you that if you've ever been saved that you can be lost again. But what I am telling you, person, you're you're a child of God. Hey, listen, you've been saved by the grace of God, but somewhere along the way, you have made a conscious decision to be disobedient to the Lord, and the wages of that sin has brought division and a separation between you and God. Amen. It's all of us. It's all, I want to tell you, I want to read to you a verse of Scripture. It's very important. If there's someone already here that Satan has told you, hey, that's under the rug, that's, that's behind you, nobody knows about that, preacher ain't talking to you, I want to tell you this right here. Over in 1 John chapter number 1 and verse number 8, listen close to this, this is important. 
If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Who do you deceive? Yourself. We deceive ourselves. We're not tricking God into believing something that is not true. Satan knows that it's true. And quite frankly, your husband and your wife and your children, they may not know the grievous sin or the, the small sin. But they might not know that, but they do know something ain't right. So we, we, we deceive ourselves. Whenever we say that we have no sin, there's not, listen, we, we make a decision, a conscious decision to repent of our sin. Whenever we're drawn by the Holy Spirit, we make that decision to go to Christ and ask Him to be the Lord of our life. But after that, child of God, please hear me, that's just not enough. Because every day, every hour, you are continued to be faced with decisions that has an outcome of whether to draw you closer to God or to draw you away from God. If there's a conscious decision already today and you've not confessed that sin, do you know what that sin's done? That sin's drove a wedge between you and God. We've earned, we've earned that wage of sin. We worked for it. We made a decision to do it. We had a choice of whether or not. But because the intent of the heart was to please the flesh and not to please God, we always will choose sin. Always! We will always choose what this flesh lusts after whenever our intent is to please ourselves and other people and not please God. If we get up every morning and say, God, help me. Every decision that I make, everything that I do, make it to be honoring unto you. We go to work. Even though we get disgusted of the things that's going around, you say, I'm going to go and I'm going to do the best job that I can today that I may honor God in what I do. But we still sin. We still wrestle against that temptation. The Apostle Paul put it best when he said, those things that I would do, I do not. It's a war that battles in the mind and in the spirit. Inside you've got the will to do good, but it seems like that flesh is fighting you so hard on the outside. There in verse 1 John chapter 1, right after verse number 8, I thank God for every time He points out something wrong, He always, always gives you a remedy. He always gives you a way to fix it. He says if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But He says in verse number 9, if we confess our sins, not if, if you have sins, right? He said if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The wages of sin. Are, are, you, in, are, you, in, are, you, uh, are you receiving are you the earned wages? Or are you enjoying the gift of God? It's, it's, not, it's not a combination of the two. Listen, it's not. You cannot have a combination of the two. You remember what Jesus said? You cannot... Serve two masters. For you'll hate the one and love the other, or you cling to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and the flesh. It's one or the other. The choice is simple. Not an easy choice, but He makes it simple. As we look on, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Notice that death is far more than just a physical death. Anyone that's ever went through a divorce, and many have, has felt what it means whenever sin comes in and destroys the home. Don't you ever look at someone and be judgmental of what they went through. I don't care how self-righteous you think you are. 
Do not sit in a seat of judgment and say, I would have done this and I would have done that. You don't know what that other person's going through until you live in that torment and in that life. But death comes because of sin oftentimes in a marriage. Until you experience that, you've not experienced true death. We've got young people that's reaching the end of the rope here in this last week. We've seen a family up, I believe it was in Michigan, was it not, that another school shooting. Our children have no hope. They're not being shown. They're not being taught. And you know what that is? Whenever we don't train our children, we don't show, we don't spread the Word of God for Him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to Him and His sin. And because sin occurs, death is soon to follow. Our children paying the consequences. Even whenever we don't pray like we ought to, that's a sin. He tells us to pray without ceasing. Stay in touch with God. For him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, him is sin. Always it brings forth death in one form or one fashion. But death, eternal death, is an eternal separation of God. I believe that's going to be the most traumatic thing about hell. Is knowing that you have spent your last opportunity. You've wasted that. You've chose to earn the wages of sin. And now, you're reaping the paycheck that is brought by sin. I heard a preacher say this. It's quite comical. He said, if you'll pay close attention to the big butts in the Word of God, you're going to be a whole lot happier if you'll pay close attention to those. For the wages of sin is death. And I love this part right here. But what? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I've seen that. Watch this now. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to pay close attention here and listen to what I say because it's not a visual illustration. You're going to have to use your mind's eye. I've seen an illustration one time. And it, this preacher had a white rope. And he strung it all the way across the stage. And he said, I want you to pretend that this white rope is your life. It never has an end. Okay? That rope, just like our geometry students, there, there, there's a line that has a beginning and not an end. And it's called a what? Infinity. That's right, infinity. Amen. It never has an end. A ray. It never has an end, right? A ray. <laughs> Got some of our teachers right here. Amen. But just imagine that rope as it stretched out in, into eternity. Never, never an end. There's a beginning, but never an end. And that preacher took about four or five inches at the start of that rope. And he painted it red. He said, what we'll do, and this is true, we'll pay all of our attention on this little part up here and take no thought of all of the rest. That comes in behind it. He said, actually, most of the time, all we pay a close attention to is this little part right up here where we can work for our retirement and say, if I'll do everything that I need to do, I can enjoy this, this little part right here. Is that what we do? We're worried about this. The Bible says this life is but a vapor. It's here for a little while and then it vanishes away. That's what that little portion is. The time we was born. The time we leave this earth. I average probably 70, 75 years. Some right out of the womb. Some live over a hundred. One thing's for certain. It's appointed unto man once to die. But after this, the judgment. What about the rest of the rope? What about the rest of your life? Hey man, uh, it's time we start being more concerned about the infinity that's in front of us, Brother Seth, than this little portion of time that we can have pleasure in sin, but for how long? A season. We make choices, Colton. We make choices based on what is appealing to the flesh, what is pleasurable. 
And that's what sin is. It appeals to the flesh. How do we know whether it's sin or not? God's given us His Word. If you're saved by the grace of God, God's gave you the indwelling Holy Spirit. That will convict you. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That, that, the word love. His love. The gift of eternal life. That's the love of God. He's able to give. Notice the difference. What is a gift? A wage is something you earn. But a gift is something, listen, that is freely given unto you that you did not earn or deserve. You didn't earn it or deserve it. Child of God, a lost person, if we get what we deserve, it would be a lake of fire where the worm dieth not. That's what we earn. Death has to come. And listen close, just because you accept Christ as your personal Savior does not mean that that price or that wage is not paid. That wage was paid out for you, child of God, on a cross at Calvary. Well, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, that He became a man that knew no sin, became sin for us, that He would carry what we deserved, which was death. Not just the physical shame and the beating and the death of the physical body, but there on the cross at Calvary, God Himself turned His back on His Son and He died alone. Alone. You have never been alone in your life. You think you have, but you've never been alone. For the Spirit of God is still striving with man. For the wages of sin and death, but the gift of God, what we did not deserve, what did we not earn? Because of Jesus Christ, God give us and commended us, so He commended His love while we were in our sin. God gave us and showed us His love while we were yet in our sin and sinners. Let me ask you this. We're coming up on Christmas. Have you ever had, listen to all you youngins, listen close. Have you ever had just an extra special gift? I'm talking about one of these. We've all had those gifts we play with for a few hours or a few days. And then they find their way to the back of the toy box, okay? And, and you can wait about three years and re-gift them and they never know the difference. <laughs> but, but somewhere, somebody, is there something, maybe we got an adult here that says, you know what, I got something whenever I was little and it still means something to me. Could I see you vote? Do you anybody? God bless you. Bless you. You know, uh, my mom... Uh, Grandma Pearl passed away. Uh, there, uh, I knew it was always there. I looked at it. But I remember Miss Jean when I was about two or three years old, believe it or not. The earliest, some of the earliest things that I remember uh, is, is a Fisher-Price TikTok. And those things were made out of wood. If Fisher-Price made cars, they'd still be running. But uh, it's about this tall and it's made out of wood, put together with nails. And they're on the back of it. You could turn that thing. And that thing would tick tock. And I remember at two and three years old, and I remember laying down uh, there on the floor and uh, putting my ear on the side of that when I wound it up and I hear that thing tick tocking. And I remember uh, that, that's how I'd go to sleep and take naps. And, uh, you know, it's always been my favorite gift. And whenever Grandma Pearl passed away, I brought that home. And me and, me and my brother Tony, a lot of you know me, he's seven years older than me, we had a discussion. He thought that it was his and I knew it was mine. All right. You know those discussions. I told him, I said, Tony, I said, I know it's mine and everybody else knows that your favorite toy was a Barbie doll. <laughs> so I, nevertheless, I brought it home. I looked at it this morning as I was thinking about that extra special gift. That it's almost 50 years old. It didn't mean anything to y'all. 
But it, it brought back special memory. You got something. Basically, something it didn't really have to do with how much it costed. All right. But something that was special. But I'm going to tell you, Brother Bobby, the best and the most special gift that I was ever given was a day whenever I was 12 years old. I felt like I didn't have a friend because of divorce, because of alcohol. I pulled from one place to another, but Mama always kept us rooted. Taught us about Jesus. Taught us that there was hope in the midst of dark times. Miss Greta, that there's a rainbow that comes after the storm. This is not all there is. Hardships will come. Consequences to our decision. But son, don't give up. There's a gift that keeps on giving year in and year out and His name is Jesus. But the gift of God is eternal life. That's the rest of the rope. But I want to tell you the good news. You don't have to wait till you die to start experiencing eternal life. He wants you to have life now. He wants you to enjoy what He's given you now. He wants you to smile. He wants you to rejoice. He wants you to enjoy even the little TikToks in your life. Everything that is good in your life, He gave it to you. He wants you to enjoy it. I think about what Jesus said over and we'll end with this thought. Over in Romans chapter number 8, this is precious. Talking about the love that God shows to us through His Son and because of His Son, Jesus Christ. Notice, we do not deserve the love of God. We did not earn the gift of God. The only reason we have the relationship with Jesus, the only reason we have an opportunity to be saved is because of our Lord Jesus Christ. He paid that sin debt. He took our wages on Him, what we earn. He paid that debt on the cross at Calvary. Whenever we accept Christ as our personal Savior, we turn loose of our earned wages and we accept the free gift. I use this analogy or illustration a lot of times at Christmas. Wrap up a box. Put your name on it. I can buy it and I can wrap it up and I can put your name on it and it says it's from me to you. But it's never yours until you get up and come and receive it and open it up and take it home and apply it to your life. Could be bought or have your name on it. It's free to you. But if you're not willing to get it, it'll never belong to you. It's the same way with salvation and the love and the relationship with our Heavenly Father. But notice this. I love this right here. Please take this home with you. Stick it in your hat because you're going to need it whenever times get hard. Listen to Romans 8, verse number 35 through 39. Love this. Powerful. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Praise the Lord for that Scripture. I'm going to tell you this morning. Hey, they may do with you whatever they may. And even your decisions. Watch this now. Do you know what? There's nothing. Watch this now. That can separate you between you and the love of God. Now this is doctrinal. Listen. Even sin, even sin, even sin cannot and will not separate you from the love of God. 
God's love for you is eternal and everlasting. But just because you love someone does not make that someone love you back. It's your choice. It's your choice. You can earn the wages of your choice or you can allow Jesus Christ to pay for that and you can enjoy the free gift and knowing that even whenever we sin, Brother Jimmy, it's the love that He has for us that brings rebuking and chastisement to us. He'll tell us we're wrong. Give us a chance to fix it and make it right. We choose to continue going. That's what happens. We'll choose to continue. We'll cover up one sin with another sin. That's what happened to David, wasn't it? It ain't going to be long. God's going to send a messenger to your door. One form or the other, the account's going to be settled. You're going to have to pay for it, or you can allow Jesus Christ to pay for it. One thing's for certain He's not deceived. We deceive ourselves into believing that we don't sin. The Bible tells us we've all sinned. Come short of the glory of God. 35,000 times a day, you make a conscious decision, and you mean to sit there and tell me that you don't sin in one of them? But how often, Miss Jean, do we go to the Lord and say, God, this, this fight that I'm feeling, I fail you so much. I know I fail you, but God, please see the intent. My desire is to serve you and to love you and to honor you. I'll tell you what, there's no place you can go. No height too high, no valley too low, that you're going to escape the love of God. And all of that were more than conquerors through Him that loved us. I love you with all my heart. But I'm afraid that a lot of people are just existing in a life that seems like that Things are continually going wrong and going wrong and going wrong. The Bible tells us God is not mocked. That that you sow, you surely shall reap. Three things happen whenever we sow seed. Whether it be good seed or whether it be bad seed. You always reap what you sow. You always reap more than you sow. And always reap later than you sow. So if we're making bad decisions based on what this flesh wants and we sin, don't be surprised whenever hardships and troubles and trials and that check comes in the mail. You're able today to enjoy not the earned wages, but you're able to enjoy the free gift that was purchased on the cross at Calvary through Jesus Christ our Lord. Would you stand to your feet? The decision is yours. Nobody can make it for you. One thing's for certain. Our loving Heavenly Father is not going to force Himself on you. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's not going to kick that door in. Give you an opportunity. You can choose pride and think that you got everybody fooled into believing that you don't sin. God's Word tells us including the preacher, we've all sinned. But what are you going to do about it? 1 John chapter 1, verse number 9 tells us to do what? If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You can come in the house of God reaping the wages that you've earned. You could come and repent of that sin and walk out rejoicing and the gift of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. What's your decision? It's up to you, Brother Bob.